Hello everyone, welcome back to Miss Ming's channel. I'm Miss Ming. In my channel, I do a lot of makeup videos, vlog videos, study videos, fitness videos, and everything I'm passionate about in my life. If these content interests you, please, con please consider subscribe to my channel. Alright, so today we are going to cover a study with me topic. Um, which is how I learned English. Um, before I start, I want to first introduce myself, give you a sense of who I really am. So, as you can tell, English is not my first language. I am originally from Beijing, China. My first language is Mandarin Chinese. I've been in the United States for six and a half years. So I did my master degree here and also my PhD here in San Antonio, Texas. I have a master degree in teaching English as a second language and um, I'm currently in my last year of PhD degree in culture, literacy and language, specializing in second language acquisition, language assessment. My primary research method is quantitative research and mixed methods. All right, so that's about me. And um, so in my previous video, some of you guys comment below, like um, you want me to talk about how I improve my English. I was like, this is a really good question because this is actually what I do. And this is actually what I do for a living. So uh, I am a teacher. I work with English as a second language learner, ESL learners, and I also work with teachers of English language learners. So I prepare teachers in how to help um, English as a second language learners in schools. So throughout the years, I learned a lot about English acquisition, like second language acquisition, like, and also through my own experience, I was faced a lot of challenges and barriers when I first came here to the United States. So I would like to share my experience and learning strategies and tips and tricks to you so that you can improve your English as well if you speak English as a second language. In addition, I am a PhD student, almost graduate. Um, so I have a four, I have a 4.0 GPA. So if you are interested in like how to improve your English, how to learn English, or how to succeed in college and graduate school, please comment down below what specific topics you want me to cover and I'll make videos for that. Hopefully they will be helpful for you. All right, let's cut to the chase and get started. As you know, learning English is not like a one day job or two day job or it's not even a one year job. So um, there's so many, there's so much content to cover. I have my personal experience. I have things I learned through the theories and literature and different research studies. So what's been proved to be effective in improving English. But because there's so much to cover, so I think there'll be, um, this will be a um, learning series. Um, so if you are interested in having more videos, please comment down below. But today, I'll be focusing on English speaking. So I know for a fact that um, a, lot of, <clears throat> a lot of people who learn English as a second language, when it comes to speaking, a lot of um, people are struggling with pronunciation, fluency, and intonation, accent, and things like that. So today, I want to talk about how I learned or how I improved my English speaking skills. All right, so first, before I start, I want to talk about when I first came to the United States, what are the challenges I was facing? I had a lot of struggles for sure. So first of all, like when I was hanging out with my friends, you know, English is not your first language. You need some more time to process your sentences and words think about a word in your mind before you speak it and i tended to speak really really slow and sometimes my friends will lose their patience you know sometimes like i would say something i mispronounce it and they will not understand and sometimes when i take too many pauses they just move on to another topic or somebody would weigh in and sp like speaking is very important in like communicating in daily life, not just in the school, not just in the classroom. So in a classroom, you want to be able to participate and establish like, you know, um, 
a good relationship with your classmates to collaborate. But outside of outside of the classroom is very important because you need to speak to the apartment complex, your leasing office, where you get your driver's lessons and everything. So speaking is definitely very very important skill for international students. These two rings have been bothering me so much. All right, move on. So speaking is definitely very very important. So how I improved my speaking skills is first to improve you need to practice. So don't don't get frustrated when you you know you can't express yourself or you have accent. You just need to talk. <clears throat> Try to talk. <clears throat> Try to talk as much as possible. It's so important. So talk to your classmates, make friends with native speakers. Really helps to not just hang out with, you know, people you're comfortable with, people from the same country. I know you want to stay with your community, but to improve speaking skills, you need to have real conversations. So tip number one: try to make friends with native speakers as much as possible, or just try to talk to them. It's it's really really important. Second is like let let's say you try to talk as much as possible, but you still make mistakes. You still talk slow. So one of the things I realized was that, <laughs> like a lot of times when you make friends with native speakers, they're your friends, right? They're really caring. They're really helpful. They're really good. They're really good, nice people. But one of the things I realize is that they don't correct you, you know. Like, but if you make mistakes and they don't correct you, you're always gonna make the same mistakes. And that's what we talk about fossilize. A lot of adult second language learners, like after they stay in a foreign country for like ten years, twenty years, you know, their English improvement kind of fossilize at some point that they can communicate fluently, but they still make the same mistakes, the same errors. So. What happened to me was, or what I did was, I try, try, I try to tell every friend, every friend of mine that, you know, if I made any mistakes and or there's any error in my speech, just let me know. Like I want to learn. To be able to improve, you need feedback. You need people to tell you what you did was wrong to be able to improve. So I think one of the things is that you can't. Just expect people to accept you as who you are, but you want people to tell you and give you constructive feedback. So, tip number two: tell your friends that you point out every mistake you you make, and it's gonna help be helpful. I know one of the things I learned in class is that you don't want to correct English language learners in their speech all over the time because it's gonna be frustrating and blah 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 blah. So a lot of times, like your teacher wouldn't even correct you because the teacher felt like you know it's not like a huge mistake and they don't want to discourage you, and that's fine. But to me, I do want to improve. I do. So. With that goal, I told my friends, "Let me know if I used the inappropriate word." But inappropriate, for example, sometimes when I say like convertible, I said, "Oh, this is changeable," and my friend will go, "No, no, no, not changeable. Convertible, convertible. This is convertible." I was like, "Oh, that's what you use. What、well, that's the word you use." So make sure you tell your friends that it's okay to give you feedback to correct you. That's good. The third tip is to to be able to really try to speak like a native speaker. You need to constantly you need to know what native speaker sounds like. So in that case, I have two things that I want to talk about. The first thing is pronunciation. So when you when you try to pronounce or when you when you talk or when you speak, try to enunciate. I know some of you guys wants to like speak fast. You want to, you know, get your message across immediately. But if you speak super fast, but at the same time not clear, people are not gonna understand you. So try to enunciate before you move on to speak faster. So what I mean is try to clearly pronounce every sound. You have trouble pronouncing, or there are words you trouble pronouncing. I would just go re repeat. Okay. Guadra, 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 guadra. Eventually, you're gonna be able to establish the muscle memory, and you'll be able to pronounce it. That's what happens to me learning Spanish. Like, 
Quadra, quadra, quadra. Sometimes I, I can do it. Sometimes I can't. But with practice, you can eventually. There is so. Tip number three: enunciate. Speak clearly before you try to speak. You know, native like fluently. You know, fast. Okay. Tip number four: like when you're talking to a native speaker, or when you're watching movies, like you constantly monitor what vocabulary is used, what grammar feature is used, and you constantly monitor the tones, the intonation, the stress, the pronunciation of every sound. <coughs> I'm drinking this fiber thing, <coughs> and this fiber has been me. Sorry. So, but what I meant was, you you need to consciously monitor what native speaker sounds like, and that's that is the honest truth. So, I started to pay attention to the sounds, like how people pronounce the sounds. For example, the vowels, the consonants, so intonations, stress, where which. At which point that the native speaker pause in a sentence, right? So, for example, a lot of times we were like, "Oh, we he said that," blah 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 blah. But that's not how native speaker they talk. They said they usually say he said that he wants to do it. The word that is connected to the sub. Subordinate, subordinate clause, not the main clause, which is something that like we do wrong. Well, it's not wrong, but we do like unnative likely a lot. So on that point, like I constantly monitor how they pronounce, how native, how native speakers pronounce the vowels, how native speakers pronounce the consonants. At the same time, I also monitor where they take pauses. Three and I constantly monitor their intonation. Like, do they go up? Do they go down? And I also constantly monitor their sentence level stress and word level stress. For example, conversation one, conversation one. You stress some of the syllables but not the others. And also within <coughs> within a sentence, <coughs> my God. Also within a sentence, there's still word levels. There's still there also sentence level stress. Sentence level stress is like <clears throat> Mary and I. You don't stress Mary and I. You stress Mary and I went to the shop last night. So you can actually see where it's stressed. So <clears throat> constantly monitor the native speaker's speech. I know it's creepy. <laughs> In a way that, like, you know, somebody's talking to me, and like, I'm not paying attention to the content. I'm paying attention to the linguistic feature of someone's speech. But that's how I learn. That's simply that's simple like that. Okay, my my neck is hurting. My neck, my neck is hurting a lot. I don't know why. Oh, all right. Moving on. So. The next tip I want to talk about is to, you know, you need a lot of input. So what it means is that not only do you need to, you know, make more friends, you also need to really watch a lot of the American TV shows, TV series, movies, and things like that. So by that, I'm not just telling you like, okay, so watch the most popular shows. Yes, you do want to watch the popular shows to be able to talk. To、um, your native speaker friends, like you know, when they talk about certain shows, and you're like, "Oh, I don't watch it." For example, like reality shows are very, very popular in America, like、uh, Shots of Sunshine. What else?、Mm, uh, sir, yeah, Sir. Wonder Pump Rules,、um, Below Deck, and like you know, the Housewives in Beverly Hills, Southern Charms. You know, like. Americans watch a lot of reality shows, and not only do you watch that, what's popular to make small conversations, you also need to <clears throat> watch a. <coughs> you also need to watch a variety of shows. What it means is that if you are very interested in science fiction, of course you're gonna watch science fiction shows, but the vocabulary used in science fiction are. About one topic, but in your daily life, you need vocabulary for you know 
daily small conversations. You need vocabulary for medical terms. You need vocabulary when it comes to legal. So what I did was, I tried to watch <clears throat> medical shows like Grey's Anatomy. I tried to watch Friends.、Oh, Friends is my favorite show. And I tried to watch The Good Wife, which is a lawyer show. I learned a lot of legal terms there, and I tried to watch like you know some sort of like science fiction, engineering shows, science shows,、um, Google shows like Silicon Valley or Silly Silicon Valley or something like that. So my point is being that if you want to be like. Rounded in growing your vocabulary, you do need to watch a variety of the shows, be to be exposed to a variety of the vocabulary and phrases and terminologies, and that's what I meant. My my neck is killing me. Ah.、Oh. So yes, so you need exposure to a variety of the vocabulary, a variety of terms to be able to develop your vocabulary to do different daily life things in the target language community or society.、Okay. The next tip I want to share is that、uh, when you watch shows, if there are any shows that you like, watch it more than once because when you first watch it, you're gonna be focusing on the content. You're not gonna focus on too much on the vocabulary and things. Things like that. So when I watch my shows, first of all, I don't use Chinese subtitles. I use English subtitles. Well, it is okay if you have Chinese subtitles. It's it's gonna be helpful. But like English subtitles is gonna be help you if you hear a word you don't know what it is and there's it it shows how it's spelled. You can look look it up in the dictionary. So what happened to me is that I will watch the same show or same movie over and over again to make sure that I. Can understand it perfectly, and I make sure that I learn all of the words that appear in that show, and that's gonna broaden your vocabulary base by a lot. So if you just watch it once, you can learn something, but it's not gonna, you're not gonna learn as much as vocabulary as if you watch it over and over again, because you know you're gonna be focusing on the content. Okay, finally, I want to talk about accent. So. Everybody has an accent. That's the honest truth. Like Americans, they have accent too. Like if you're from Georgia, you have South an accent. If you're from South Carolina, North Carolina. If you're from Boston, you have Bostonian accent. You're from Texas, you talk like a cowboy. You talk like a cow. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I I still can't do Texas accent. Well, sometimes I can a little bit, but like my point is being that everybody has an accent, right? So your accent reveals who you are and where you're from, and that's the honest truth. If you're from Texas, let's say if you move to New York, people are gonna people are gonna tell that you're not from New York. People are gonna tell that you're from Texas. Same thing. You're from China. You live here in Texas. People are gonna tell that you're from an exotic. Asian country, probably China, but you know it could be other countries. So, by that, what I meant was try to pronunciate everything correctly. Try to have the、um, intonation that's like more native. Like try to have the stress level. So these are all two words like phonology and pronunciation, right? But when it comes to accent, like as long as like. You learn English after a certain age, according to critical language hypothesis. Like after a cut of age, then you are never gonna be native like. So, but people have been debating what this age is about. Like maybe five, maybe some say eight, some say like as late as eleven. But my point is being, you're always gonna have the accent, and when people they laugh at your accent, they're never laughing at your accent. They're laughing at. So when I was teaching, when I was teaching my students, we watched a lot of the sociolinguistic research and videos. And there has been,、uh, there was a sociolinguist from Stanford. So this very, very、um, intelligent scholar went to Detroit, and he made three phone calls to the listing office. The first one is the American standard、um, accent, like how. Standard English is supposed to sound, and then he had an African American accent, 
right? The black accent. And then he had the Latino accent. He did a wonderful job <laughs> trying to mimic like the accent from different community. And he got different results. When he was speaking like a white person, he's he got a lot of like offers. He's like, yeah, like we have housing, we have apartments available. When he was speaking with Latino accent and African American accent, some <clears throat> they said there was no openings, there was no availability. He just called. There was availability. There was available things. There were available apartments. What it means that it's not about accent itself. It's about like how people perceive the people that's associated with the accent. And everybody is entitled to their opinion. There's nothing you could do. So I used to be ashamed of my accent as well. I felt like I can never get rid of my accent. But then after learning about sociolinguistics, learning about social justice. Uh, learning about these like academic concepts, I realize my accent reveals who I am, and I endorse that. So you should endorse that as well. So I would not really worry too much about my accent, accent itself. But sometimes I mispronounce the words, and sometimes I have the weirdest intonation ever. Like sometimes when I talk, like, okay, can I do this? Can you do this? I'm like, why am I, why am I talking like this? Like sometimes when I get tired, like my tongue got tied, and sometimes like I talk weird, like as if I'm talking in my dream, and that's just the honest truth. You know, you sometimes you're too tired to speak clearly, you're too tired to enunciate. But what my point is being that try to. Talk as clear to talk as like try to have the more acceptable and acceptable intonations and the word level, sentence level stress, but just endorse, embrace your accent. It reveals who you are. You're proud of who you are, and let's just go with that. All right, so I hope this video is helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, if you feel like there's something I need to elaborate more, please comment down below.、Um, it's just on the top of my head to see these are the things that I experienced and what I learned throughout the years to improve my English speaking skills. All right, I hope this video is helpful to you. Please give it a thumbs up and comment down below like what questions you have, what other topics you want me. To talk about, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.